First News with Keeler in the morning on WIBX and WIBX950.com. Normally, we're the deliverers of um, bad news, Andrew, when it comes to uh, weather. But uh, I almost forgot how to say sunshine today. Yeah, well, the whole weekend looks nice. And uh, even next week, mid to upper 70s. God, we haven't seen that since uh, since April. Love it. Yeah, <laughs> or yeah. March. <laughs> since March. When it was like, wow, it's going to be an early spring. Okay, um, we're going to get to the whole CDC thing uh, coming up, uh, which is... Was kind of a surprise yesterday over over mass. We'll get into that in a in a few minutes. Uh, Rachel Sutherland standing by right now. Uh, President Biden uh, meets with six Republican senators, and the topic is a topic that's been around for quite some time, even during the Trump administration. They were always talking about infrastructure, 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 and that's the topic. Good morning, Rachel. Hey, good morning. Yes, six Republican senators went to the Oval Office yesterday to meet with President Biden. Shelley Moore Capito of West Virginia was there, among others. And they talked about the president's infrastructure plans, both of, both sides really coming out and having positive things to say. But they're still really far apart. The president wants to spend up over to $4 trillion on the infrastructure between two packages. Republicans disagree with his ideas on if or what is actually the definition of infrastructure. Republicans uh, throwing around numbers from $568 billion uh, to around eight hundred billion, so they're they're in that kind of area as far as spending money, and they also disagree on how to pay for it. Obviously, uh, really, the, the uh, White House is saying that that the president wants Republicans to come back next week with a really firm proposal on how they plan to pay for their infrastructure plans. They've said just you know in a kind of vague way, money that's already been allocated by Congress, but. They haven't said specifically, okay, what jar are you reaching into? Uh, and, uh, you know, when you say what is infrastructure, uh, it's just hard to believe that uh, it just shows you how, how, how complicated Washington can be. Um, because uh, oftentimes the Democrat uh, definition involves things that don't look anything like infrastructure, right? Well, especially with President Biden's second part B of his plan, when he's talking about things like free community college and free preschool for three- and four-year-olds, it, it sounds good on the face of it, free, 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 but some would wonder, Republicans are saying, well, how is that infrastructure? The White House is arguing that's infrastructure because it helps us stay competitive with the rest of the world. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, it, it's, it helps sell. Uh, the White House has said that they're going to, look at Memorial Day as kind of, okay, what kind of fruit have the negotiations brought forth? If not, we're going to move forward, and then July 4th as a time frame to actually start moving legislation through. And I don't know what it's like around the rest of the, uh, around, around the, rest of the country, but in New York, if, in, if you go to community college in your county, um, it, it's very inexpensive. Um, and if you're low income, you're already going for free. Well, in in our area, certainly a lot of young people choose to do the two years of community yeah. college here, and it, oh, it's far in a way less expensive. But this is just anecdotal. I've seen a lot of uh, kids that start that and don't finish it. It's not the same feel as a as a four year school. I mean, yeah, that's just yeah. anecdotally. But um, yeah, it, but it would put it that within reach and, and take some of the pressure off at the same time. It, the question is, should taxpayers be footing that bill? Okay, interesting uh, stuff, uh, Rachel. Thanks so much. We appreciate it. Thanks. Uh, Rachel Sutherland from Fox News. Uh, talking about uh, the CDC saying fully vaccinated people uh, no longer have to wear a mask. There are some exceptions, and, of course, each state will have the kind of define what those rules mean. Here's what was uh, said. Anyone yesterday. who is fully vaccinated can participate in indoor and outdoor activities, large or small, without wearing a mask or physical distancing. If you are fully vaccinated, you can start doing the things that you had stopped doing because of the pandemic. Based on the continuing downward trajectory of cases, the scientific data on the performance of our vaccines and our understanding of how the virus spreads, that moment has come for those who are fully vaccinated. All right. I think it's uh, it's actually it has excited one member of our staff. Um, and oh, yeah. That was Manaski. You're I very mean, excited about that. I was just complaining is what 
Wednesday. What's the incentive? The only incentive I've got is I don't have to get a nasal swab if I want to go to a Connets game. Yeah, that's the and only now it's over. So yeah. Hmm. So I look. I'm pumped about this. You're right. They still have to adopt certain things in New York State. I think this is going to bump up the timeline on restaurants. And I heard uh, somebody was talking yesterday about like you know what's the capacity going to be for baseball games or football games in the fall i think all that stuff gets bumped up now that the cdc i think we're going to see by by the fall as long as we don't you know as long as we don't have some weird strain that the uh, that the vaccine doesn't take care of i think we're going to see 100% um uh, by fall as a matter of fact we may see it by by the summertime biden is pushing for 4th of july to be the time that would be nice uh, it would be nice, right? Happy birthday, America, and freedom. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Although you still wonder, all those Yankees coaches, and now uh, uh, Glaber Torres, the uh, the Mountain Ice guy. Um, <laughs> that's what I call. Him. That's right. Um, he's tested positive, yes. and and they all had the vaccine. Yeah. So it, it and and I and I I didn't get into this as much as I wanted to yesterday with Dr. Hall, but when when, when I think you know of Efficacy being at 95%. I'm thinking if there are 100 people, five, on average, five will, will get the virus even though they have the vaccine. But that's not necessarily how the numbers work. Um, it means that that you are 95% covered if you get near, if you come in contact with the virus, right? Mm -hmm. So this kind of shows you that it could be, you know, by chance, I guess it could be 10 people out of 10 people that come in contact with it would get it just by chance, I guess. Also, I'm pretty sure they did the one dose. They were the, and they were the, the which, the which isn't even, which isn't even 5%. It'd be more of uh, uh, 30%. 30%. Yeah. But the, the difference there is that, uh, is that Johnson & Johnson keeps you is at 100% uh, or nearly 100% keeping people out of, out of the hospital. So... You know, if all these numbers hold to be true, and I say that because we're still still early, um, it is uh, it's going to be interesting. But now, I, and I, I got to tell you something, I really think there will still be some spots where I may still wear a a mask, and I think mm -hmm. there's going to be some places where you're still going to be required. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, but at the at the same time, uh, for the most part, it means you can shed the mask. Although I don't think that's in effect yet in New York. No, 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 no. That's Cuomo's what I mean. Saying, yeah. Cuomo wait has for, to wait be, for the science. He science. has to be the one that says it. Yeah. Right. So maybe tomorrow he'll say it. <laughs> yeah. uh, and then Cuomo's comments about, uh, about see, I, I, in part he's true. He's correct. That uh, the harassment is, uh, what was his statement? Just Harass because just, you make someone yeah. feel uncomfortable doesn't mean you it's harassment. Well, that's not what he said. No. And what he said was making someone feel uncomfortable is not harassment. And what you said, I think, is true. What he said is not true. You said just because it's more of a hypothetical. Right. His comment was more of an absolute. You see what I'm saying? Right, right. Because I guess what? If you're sexually harassing somebody, you are making them feel uncomfortable. <laughs> I can guarantee you. Yeah, right. Hence, but, hence so, the harassment. So had he said, yes, uh, just because I've harassed somebody doesn't necessarily, or just because I've made someone feel uncomfortable doesn't necessarily mean I've harassed them. Mm. See what, where I'm, but, and he right. said, if you listen to his statement, it was in absolute fashion. And I, I think that's wrong. He's absolutely wrong as he's trying to read. And why even go there? What is he thinking? To even go down that road, I don't get it. Listen, so all sexual harassment is a form of harassment, but not all harassment is sexual harassment. That's true too. Yes. See where I'm going? Ding, I mean, ding, ding. I and you're you're kind of smiling, like kind of making uh, making fun of me here this morning. No, I'm, oh no. yeah, oh yeah, I'm watching it. No, but I, the reality is this guy plays with words, too, yeah. mm -hmm. right? You now we're talking it. about you, right? Yeah, that's right. I like I like to play with him too. But you're you're you you got to watch this this Andrew Cuomo because he yeah. loves playing with words. But in this case, I, I I think he's wrong. 
if, if, if you're making, if you're sexually harassing somebody or harassing them, you're making them uncomfortable. Can he accidentally say something stupid like this in front of Chris Wallace at some point? I know because he you will know, just get dissected. Well, I I don't know. Does he? Does he? Even with Chris Wallace, who to me is a fair interview, the problem with Chris Wallace is um, he's gonna he. It doesn't matter whether you're Republican or Democrat. He's gonna hit you, mm-hmm. and, and and he's gonna land a punch if it's deserving, and even if it isn't, he's still gonna ask the tough questions. I don't think he'll even sit down with them. No, there's no way. Yeah. Uh, Harry is in New Hartford. Good morning, Harry. Uh, good morning, Bill. Uh, yes, I just wanted to comment about uh, a lot of people hold up that Johnson & Johnson, uh, like you just mentioned, that as far as hospitalization or loss yeah. of life, yeah. yeah, it might be 100% effective. But I think we lose sight of the fact that both Moderna and Pfizer also have that attribute, plus they're 95% effective. Uh, their efficacy rather than 76 or well or I'll, I'll 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 confirm that but if i understand correctly and what dr hall has said and what uh, what you watched when when fauci talks is that's not true that that you have a five percent you have a five percent chance and I, and and by the way mm-hmm. when they say a hundred percent i don't buy it i i don't think we've been a we've the the vaccine has been around a uh, long enough for us to say no one is going to end up in the hospital if you take Johnson and Johnson. I, I find that kind of hard to believe. But but here's what I'm saying, Harry, is that Moderna and uh, and Pfizer are ninety. Their efficacy is at ninety five percent, which means there's a five percent chance that you can still get it, but no guarantee that you won't wind up getting a serious case and ending up in the hospital. I'm pretty sure that's the case. I okay. I, I wish you would qualify that today. I will. Chance of Dr. Fauci, we, but, but uh, well, it won't be Fauci. I wish it was. I wish we had it today. But as far as the hospital or loss of life, the other quick thing. But I'm gonna, gonna I, 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 Harry. I will at seven forty. That'll be the first question we ask Dr. Okay. Hall this morning. The yeah. other thing, if I could quickly mention, was yep. uh, about Jeff yesterday talking about uh, uh, the variants. That well, if you got the vaccine, then then it'd be more, more likely to get the variant. Blah blah blah. Well, the more people who get the vaccine, the less variants there are going to be. Um, I think so that's I true, mean, and I and I, I think you agree with that, Jeff. Right? Yeah. What was what was yeah. my was I saying something different than that? Yes, you said uh, you know that would be counterintuitive uh, because then I would get the uh, a ver- be more likely to get a variant. Uh, and, I think that came yeah. out wrong um, because I I think we're all in agreement that the more people and that's the part of this when when people say. Listen, I, I, my chance of, of getting it are low. Um, I, I, I'm, not, I'm younger. I'm not going to end up in the hospital. So why should I get it? Well, the reason you should get it is because the more people that, that don't have it and the more this, this circulates, even asymptomatic, the more chance the virus has to find a new, a new path and mm-hmm. create a variant that might end up being uh, a problem for the vaccine. The vaccine might not cover that. So I think we're all in agreement on that. Yeah, absolutely. I th- Andrew made that point. It wasn't me. Oh, okay. No, no I'm kidding. Except I'm kidding. for Andrew, who's I'm always wrong. Uh, oh, okay. no, every time I feel like I make a good point that a listener agrees with, they go, and Andrew's right, by the way. <laughs> so, but well, I, it's not too often. But I, for I, you. I, 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 Harry, I'll bring the, I, I'll bring these. Who's the guy who's talking there with you? Who's talking right now? That's Jeff. Well, then there was Andrew. Jeff, who? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Who's this Jeff guy? I've never heard of him before. I don't Is know. he new? All right, Harry, that was that was a, a good point right there. Thank you, and I'll and I'm going to drive your point home at uh, seven forty this morning. All right. Okay. Thanks. Okay. Thanks. And I, I, it's funny how we, you know, I think people, I, I, I think we are taking these numbers a little too literally. When you're like, it's 100%. You've had Johnson & Johnson. You're never going to. There's no one that's going to wind up in the hospital. I don't know. I find that kind of hard to believe that it's that perfect. I hope it is, but I agree. Yeah. Um, well, anyway. So uh, remind me, because by the time we get to 740, I'll have completely forgotten about the conversation with Harry, and, and I'll screw <laughs> so this what's up. what's your question again? So I, I, I think going over the, the efficacy and the percentages and – and he's saying that he uh, he believes his understanding is that Pfizer and Moderna also prevent you from winding up in the in the hospital. And I know why he's saying that, because a lot of times you watch these interviews 
on TV and they say the va- the vaccine also will reduce the severity of the of of the virus if you get it. Mm-hmm. But you know, I I when I hear people compare the two Johnson and Johnson to the other two, they always say and the difference between Johnson and Johnson is it's a hundred percent, almost a hundred percent, keeping you out of the hospital, um, whereas the other two don't do that. Okay, and again, we're so early on this, we're throwing numbers around, where you wonder how much do we, how much do we really know? And the other part of this, I hate to be the uh, the skeptic here, and there are plenty out there. Why all of a sudden now, out of the blue, did uh, CDC come to the conclusion? And I'm happy with it. Don't get me wrong. But out of the blue, they're like, oh, and by the way, you don't have to wear a mask if you've been vaccinated. I don't know. A month ago, they told us something completely different. Yeah, I wonder if there was a certain threshold as far as the percentage who are um, vaccinated that they were waiting for to trigger well, something and, and, like this. And they're but, saying that that's exactly what it is, that they're learn- they've are they learned more about the, the success right. and you would of hope the vaccine. That the CDC, with all the, you know, with the funding that they get and all that, are using it to do studies and, and experiments and whatever else to try and, you know, Prove that that's the case. That it's one would hope. So, and the uh, other thing is, I do think that we've seen a slowdown in the, in the demand for the vaccine, and I think it is what we talked about this week. For some, was uh, for a lot of people, we okay, got to give an incentive. Got to got to have an incentive. People I now think, think listen, yeah. I can do this, that, and the other if I get my vaccine. Okay, I'll do it. The reality is, like, if everybody wears a mask, I can tell you right now. We will be better off in terms of colds and other viruses going around, and I think that they're. I, I, I think that they've now reached the point where it, they they would rather have the risk of people not wearing a mask than the risk of people not getting the vaccination. And by telling people you can you can take the mask off if you get the vaccination, it's going to get more people. Like I saw this interview on yeah, NBC absolutely. last night. There was a woman, young young female, jumping up and down. If you tell me I can take this mask off, I'll get a vaccine every week. I think she was being sarcastic. (laughs) But, you know, uh, it's really what Manaski said. Okay, there's a shortage of blank. I can't even believe this. Mm. Yeah, the gas thing, and now it's flowing again. How about we also learned that that company that owns the pipeline paid millions uh, of dollars to uh, to get control of their system again? Wow. What's to prevent the the, the this group? If you give a mouse a cookie. This hacker, want to right? Grass them right. Up. What's the? What, how do we? It's like almost negotiating with terrorists, right? That's yeah. what we're doing, right? But apparently, we are so vulnerable that there was no way to get control of that pipeline and their software. They had no choice but to pay to get it back. So the um, wow, the shortage you're talking about. I'm guessing you're going to say chlorine. Tablets. Uh, I've oh, heard about that. Nice. I've heard about yeah. that. I have. Chick fil A um, sauce is, is that a shortage? I will tell you that uh, we have a salt water pool, so I don't even have to really worry about that. That's great. Uh, I it know it generates its own chlorine. We've recently experienced the shortage in ketchup packets, right? Ketchup packets. Yeah. But that's not what it is. Can I get a hint? Can you use it in a sentence? Um, today is National <laughs> uh, oh, Dance Like a Chicken Day. Oh, great. Um, today is uh, that, but uh, the, the the shortage is chicken. What? There's apparently a shortage oh. of chicken and chicken wings. I saw something about that. There's $2 a wing at this point. And it's going to be going up even more because they say for some reason, I don't know why, I don't apparently chicken farmers are like, hey, I'm getting an extra $600 a week. I'm not, I'm not going to take care of the chickens. So the chickens all died. Now we have a shortage. That's how this apparently happened. So actually, I know somebody who works in uh, cooking field, actually for medical, and said uh, they didn't order. They haven't been ordering chicken wings because the price is so high. The price is so high. Yeah. Um, chicken what, wings. What causes such a thing? Right. It's a good question. <clears throat> yeah. If Did there somebody... really is a shortage, I mean, they say, "Well, listen, there's a shortage. It's hard to get. We got to raise prices. Two dollars a wing." Did Zimbabwe? Hack the chicken coop. I don't or know. Something something, <laughs> something went down. Something went down there. Crazy, right? Uh, let's see. Uh, last night I had a. Uh, you, ever, you know, I've been I've been working on. You know, you're so into the news and you're so into what's going on. And you know this this is opening. Uh, uh, Amazon's going to open up a place in in Frankfurt. It's going to be much smaller, but it's going to. I had a dream last night that Tesla 
has opened up a manufacturing plant in Frankfurt. That would be great. Yeah, that, that'd be it, cool. I believe that's coming. <laughs> I, I woke up this morning like, wow, that is really if cool. If you think about it, it would make <laughs> sense because with the chips that are going to be manufactured, the silicon carbide chips that are going to be manufactured at Cree, it would just be a, a trip down the road for them to put them in the... I guess it would. They could yeah, autopilot, right, from Frankfurt to, uh, they, to Marcy. They, that's they right. could, yeah. Uh, there's a new document, documentary coming out. I think it's going to be very interesting to watch. Do you remember back when we had so few problems, other than, I guess, the Gulf War, but so few problems that uh, we could worry about this duo that really wasn't singing the big hit that was the big hit? Do you remember Millie Vanilli? Oh, yes, I do. Uh, the Millie Vanilli controversy was that uh, they, they, they had a lot of hits out, but... Someone came forward and said, you're not going to believe this, but they're not singing. Mm -hmm. It's actually studio singers that are, that are actually singing. They are lip syncing. And now there is a documentary that is coming out that will include interviews with surviving member Fab Morvan and the people who actually sang the songs. One of the big ones was this one. I mean, I remember being on the radio at that time. That was an enormous song. Yeah. and It was a it, huge story when that broke, too. And they had others as well, um, and it was a big story. It's like, you know, um, if that were to break today, would we even pay attention to it? I kind of wonder. With everything going on in the world. Um, speaking of music, some people are questioning the judgment of John Bon Jovi. I uh, remember last summer, one of the big summer songs was from... Uh, Harry Styles, Andrew, and it was called Watermelon Sugar. Yes. Hi. Yeah. yeah. I don't believe that song should ever be covered by anyone. Oh, no. But he what didn't. is Bon Jovi doing covering oh. this song? <laughs> Honest to God. You want to hear his, yes, I do. his version of it? <laughs> I actually like, really like do. Like one would say, listen, get your fix, go out to a bar and do karaoke. But I think the problem is the pandemic has prevented Bon Jovi from going out and singing karaoke. So yes. he's like, I'll just do a cover of the song. Although on a side note, I heard there might be a place doing it. Oh, I, I, Locally. I, I think I saw, I saw it the other night, to be honest with you. I'm okay, uh, here we go, here we go. Here's I want your in a now, I'm, I it have does to, sound like he's in a karaoke bar. It does. He's actually performing, but you got to listen to the people <laughs> laughing in the oh. background. There are people actually <laughs> laughing. Listen. I want your <laughs> oh God! I, I somebody ought to just yell out, "You're too old to do that song." <laughs> what are you doing? <laughs> it's creepy. It's creepy. God <laughs> Almighty! Uh, we've been talking this morning about the CDC easing indoor masking fully vaccinated people. If you're fully vaccinated. There's a treat for you coming. Here's Tanya J. Powers to talk about that. Good morning. Hey, good morning. So I want to ask you, um, because you've been very careful during this uh, during this virus, as have so many people from uh, the New York City area, uh, and really the rest of us have been as well, very uh, as, 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 as careful as we can be. Um, does this change for you? Will you begin to go maskless at times? Um. It depends on where I'm going, yeah, honestly. Yeah. I mean, if I'm just kind of out, you know, walking on the sidewalk or going to the park or, or whatever, um, then, you know, I'm not going to be as as uh, diligent about it because, you know, I'm fully vaccinated. Yeah. Here, the people in my – most of the people in my household are fully vaccinated. One still has a couple of weeks left. Um, but, you know, for the most part, you know, I'm I'm – not going out and I mean, <laughs> you're not you're you're not going to put yourself in that arena anyway. Yeah, right. Yeah. Because you know, there's a lot. There's a myriad of reasons um, why. But yeah, yeah there's there, you know, I'm not going to do that now. Am I going to go to you know giant crowd activities and mm -hmm. and stand shoulder to shoulder with other people? I probably wouldn't have done that before the pandemic. Yeah, um, yeah. Unless it's a mm -hmm. unless it's a baseball game, and that's different. But <laughs> and then, and again, there's a, there's probably a difference between indoors and outdoors for something like that. There is. Um, yeah. But as far as like um, you know, going in businesses, I, I mean, I think the businesses here are still going to be able to say, "Yeah, you have to wear a mask in here." Mm -hmm. Yeah. 
Um, you know, so, I mean, you I've know, still got to carry it with me anyway, just in case I go in someplace and yeah. have to have a mask. You know? I, I, could see, I could see grocery stores saying, yeah, we're still going to keep the mask mandate. Um, yeah. But I could also see some grocery stores saying we're not going to do it. So it'll be interesting to see what happens with, yeah, the, with the governor there. But, you know, I find it also where you got to be like, for instance, in a restaurant, you put the mask on to walk to your table. Once you get to your table, you have to take the mask off. Um, you get to take it off. So and then everybody sits there and laughs and eats. I, I've always thought that was kind of foolish. Yeah, um, I've, I've never understood that. I mean, yeah. what what about the trip to the table is more dangerous than sitting there for an hour and Correct. treating everybody else there? Yeah. <laughs> and I and I will say for the employees, it's very difficult because they got to wear a mask yeah. the whole time. But um, yeah, I, and you, I thought, and you want to talk about vulnerable people? Those folks don't get sick days. I know. I mean, yeah. folks in restaurants don't. You yeah. know, they're they're barely making money as it is, and they don't get a lot of. You know, they they're, don't they're get paid vacation, anyway. right? Yeah. yeah. So um, I find that to be a, a little bit uh, ridiculous in the beginning. Like we're just, uh, you know, and we go, I, I'll go into a restaurant, but there'll be some that maybe I wouldn't feel comfortable with. But for the most part, we, we will eat. We've been eating out since I think uh, quite well, I think we we stopped going to restaurants around December because it was so bad up here and even January. But since then, we've we've not had a, had an issue with it. But it does seem kind of odd that. You know, we're gonna we're gonna make you wear mask to the table, but once you get there, it's uh, your your home or safe. Or if you stand up to go to the bathroom, right? You, you gotta know? put your mask on. So yeah, uh, I mean, it is, it, it is. You're right. That stuff like that is kind of a head scratcher. Yep. Um, with it, I mean, I will probably, unless it is oppressively hot or raining, I will probably keep dining outside. I just kind of like <laughs> I like sitting outside. Honestly, yeah, yeah. And I don't have a problem with that at all. And, um, and and I got to tell you this, but there is a and in some cities in New York included, even in, in cooler weather, people will sit outside with their jackets mm-hmm. and they're eating outdoors. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I would absolutely do that. I mean, yep. just because it's you know, it, depending on the setting, obviously. Yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, I think you know, I, I enjoy doing that anyway. So I'm probably going to keep doing that just. You know, because I, yeah. I like it. You know? uh, but this is, uh, would you agree, though, this uh, easing of indoor mask wearing guidance is an enormous incentive for people to say, for some of those who haven't been inspired to get this vaccine, to say, you know what, I want to carry that card. I'm getting the vaccine. I, yeah, I think that's the whole, I think that's the point behind yeah. it, yeah. is to say, okay, you know, the, the fully vaccinated folks are the ones who are you're going to have, you know, an easier time of doing things um, because of that. Now, you know, there's plenty of folks who have who have said, okay, well, I'm just going to say I'm vaccinated and I'm not wearing a mask. Because at this point, we're having to sort of, it's like the it's like the candy honor box in the break room right. of America at this mm-hmm. point. Because, yep. you know, you're just sort of depending on everybody else to do, you know, to, to be, to honest. be vaccinated yeah. and to be yeah. honest about it. Yeah. And, you know, Good luck with that because people, you know. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to tell you, people are people, and you're always a couple dollars short on the boxes of uh, M and M's and the money that's in the in Which the little really donation a shame, bit. It's for the children. That's right, Andrew. That's right. <laughs> okay, well, it'll be interesting to see what happens with this, but I, um, I I wouldn't be a bit surprised if people start requiring either a physical card, which could be faked, I think, uh, or yeah, using could. that Excelsior Pass, which is not easy to to get your vaccination card into that pass. So that seems to be uh, pretty authentic. We'll see what happens. Yeah, I've, I've got some friends who have done the Excelsior Pass, uh, you know, to go to Yankees games and stuff like yeah, that. Yeah, and, um, yeah. and so I, I've kind of, I've wondered about that. I've wondered who all, you know, if people have, have been getting those things. i got to tell you that um, uh, we went to a, a hockey game here on uh, Wednesday night. Still not a lot of people inside the auditorium. But um, it was nice to be able to walk up, show your vaccination card. Mm-hmm. They take your temperature. You still have to fill out some paperwork mm-hmm. um, on the app, but then you walk right in. Uh, that felt pretty good. That's uh, nice. Yeah. That's good. Okay, Tanya, have a wonderful weekend. Thank you. You too. Uh, Tanya J. Powers from Fox News. So, yeah, now, again, it's people like Tanya who have, are, are over-careful, very, very careful, that I don't think you'll see them take the mask off. Right. The other thing is... But at least it's voluntary. You're doing it because you want to do it, and you're doing it to protect well, yourself. Right now, it's not voluntary. Right. You right. still have to. But, you know, 
I wonder as well because what stops, and I, I'm sure a lot of people will have their Excelsior pass or will have their actual uh, vaccine card. I can't get mine to work. I can't. I tried to put mine in. I couldn't get it to work. Really? It says they don't have any record of me getting the vaccine. Are you serious? Yep. Yep. And you did it at the state site, right? Yeah. Hmm. I That's don't get interesting. it. But you know, I, you know what? To be honest with you, um, I'm having the same problem with the OD app, and it's burning <laughs> me up. I can't even read stories anymore on my phone. Um, uh, and I had this pro- the same problem with the uh, the Syracuse.com app. You know, Brent uh, Nimmo is is uh, is in Syracuse right now. He is. I couldn't read that story because for some reason, either they don't remember my password or I don't remember it. I don't know. But I I, I have a million passwords. I, I can't know. remember. A, uh, a, it, the phone has to do it, or the computer has to do it, and when it doesn't, or their software doesn't work, I can't get into it. I'll take a nice ransomware attack just to not have to change my password every three days. I almost feel like that's, you know, <laughs> I, I, I I had a conversation with somebody in my family, and I'm like, you got to keep, you have to, you can't use that password. You got that password on every site, and, oh, by the way, it's the easiest password in the world. Well, I have it easy so that I remember it. Yeah, but it doesn't. The idea is to not remember it and let the automation in your phone kind of take care of it. But when the automation in your phone doesn't work and that person is bringing up a very good point, you're frustrated because now you got to go searching to find your password. And there are many things that you just won't do because it's not worth searching. Right. Or they, you got to do the reset thing where they send you an email. You know. Hate it. Hate it. Well, how about this? When, with our email, if I sign in to the company email here, if I sign in to another computer and I want to sign into my email, and God forbid my phone's in another room, I have to go because they send you not only the password's not yeah. good enough anymore, it sends you a six digit verification code to your phone. You I couldn't type get in. that. I couldn't get that to work in my, uh, and, and now they won't allow me to use my, my personal email here. So I have to use the company email and I can never get it to work. So. I've uh, started a new policy. I don't read emails anymore. I just, I don't read them. Why read them? I can't get into it. Why read them? Uh, A couple comments here this morning on the chicken shortage. So the chicken farmers, this is from Michael, decided not to raise chickens because they got more money not to work. So I guess the chickens came home to roost. (laughs) I think we needed that. Well done. And in spite of CDC guidance regarding masks... After nearly a year and a half of this, I think we as a people are going to have to get used to going out again and being comfortable without people, with people without a mask. I think that's absolutely true. Or even going out socially as much as we used to. I so do think it's true. One yeah. one thing to think about here, you think about a grocery store or a movie theater. I mean, does that mean that they have to have somebody at the door Oh, sir, if you're not wearing your mask or ma'am, there you have to show lies, your vaccine card? Yeah, therein lies the uh, the problem with this. It's very simple to say you don't, you don't have to wear a mask if you're vaccinated. Now everybody's out saying, how do you prove that I'm vaccinated? Yeah, that's true. I mean, you get the and, card, and, but does that mean, you know, you're going into a gas station. you got to show your vaccine card. You're going mm-hmm. into a... Uh, some, you know, a bank to pick something up or something. you got to show well, your vaccine that's the, card. That's the thing. I think they're going to – New York certainly, but I think a lot of states will be slow to actually yeah, ad- because of adopt that. these guidelines yeah, yeah. because of that. John and Bridgewater. Good morning. But, but it's know, nice to know that if you have, you know, you have family over for the weekend or, you know, Memorial Day's coming up, mm-hmm. you're doing a cookout. Yeah. Well, I'll tell you, a uh, graduation party there that, we didn't, that we didn't have for my daughter last year, um, we, we, like, argued over this thing. Yeah. Uh, just a, about a month ago. I, is it going to be okay to do it? And I'm I'm saying, yeah. I'm the one saying, I think we can do it. Let's just do this thing. For the graduation party, you have to have a vaccine card or a negative proof of a negative test in the last six are you, are you act Are you acting as if that conversation didn't come up in my house? Or a, no, thickly, I think it's a smart one. Because it did. The, you know, there's the third option. A thickly stuffed uh, graduation card will, uh, will go a long <laughs> way, too. That's right. That is right. Right, so vaccinated. It's what, it's what we weren't able to do last year, and we're going to do it. Um, As you should. And it, um, so there. <laughs> That's all I'm saying. <laughs> there, CDC. Uh, John and Bridgewater. Hey, Bill, good morning. Hey, John. Hey, I got a, I got my card done. So what you, I did is I took it and um, put it you, on my boss's copier, did both sides, laminated it, punched a hole in it, and put a, sh- uh, a sheet little, lace through it. Okay. So Smart. I wear it. Only when I go into stores and I have a mask just in case somebody yep. has an issue with it. Yeah, okay. Uh, that's simple as that. 
instead of. Are you going into stores though and and not wearing a mask and saying I'm vaccinated? I don't have to wear a mask. I did yesterday at did. Cliffs, and the, guy, the kid looked at me, so I said, "Hold on." I went out and I had that. <laughs> you guys had a press release that you guys put out. Yeah, sent out an alert okay, about. Anyways, it, yeah. I showed him that, and I went out and got my card. So I did have a card with him with me. Okay, I, I don't think that I showed him that. So. Yeah, I don't think that relieved the 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 rules right. for the it record. Well, yeah, so but. You're a rebel, John, so I'd expect well, you to do it. I carry the mask just in case somebody has an issue, then yeah. I will put it on. Okay. But it, until somebody <laughs> says something to me, I'm just going to carry my card with me. And I think you're going to see, now that this has been announced, I think you're going to see a lot more of this. Yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah. Wow. Instead uh, of somebody taking your word for it, say, well, I did get vaccinated. Well, where's your card? Well, here's my card right here. Uh, apologies to the gas station clerks, but I think you are going to see more of this. And Look, yep. it's until the state or all the gas stations say you don't need a mask anymore, please don't, because you're going to get a yeah, lot of this. Yeah, you're, going you're, on. it is not, um, you know. But, John, like I said, you're a rebel with a cause. Yeah, I don't so, think so. You know. but. And with a mask and a vaccine card and his keys That's and right. his wallet. That and is his... absolutely right. That is right. I don't have his golf clubs. What I love is the fact that you showed you showed them your vaccine card and the story on the WIBX app. <laughs> <laughs> well, the kids are Listen. Me, I don't have my mask because I don't have to wear it no more. John, John, I appreciate that. No, but we still, you still do have to wear the mask. <laughs> I, I had it with me, and he did not request me to put it on. Well, so they I won't. I don't on. think they will. Uh, most places right. are trying to avoid the argument there. Right. Listen, but any- I'm going to tell you, there'll be some some woman arguing with you about it. I can guarantee. I don't want to. I shouldn't discriminate. It could be a man too, mm-hmm. well, but some quote unquote Karen, if you will, that is going to be like you. No, you have to wear a mask. Get your mask on. John, and I would appreciate any time we send out an app alert that you just walk into the nearest business and start showing them our page. Yeah. <laughs> say, hey, look, let's look at read this. Yeah, share yeah, that with your friends. Them. All right, man. Hey. Okay, thanks. Take care, we'll John. See you have a great day. Yep. But I do think you're going to see a lot more of what John is doing. <laughs> that is awesome. Did you you didn't get the alert from IBX? Here it is. It says it right here. You read it for yourself. Here it is. Pull your mask down if you. Uh, the other thing that uh, we're seeing going... He goes uh, into the store, take them off! Look what it says! The other thing we're seeing going away is the one way in the grocery store. Uh-huh. Oh, you seen yeah. that's kind of... Dis- I stopped following that. Uh, well, I got to tell you, it never was, was it? Right. It really no was. one ever followed it. I think I... W- there was a point where I was kind of annoyed that people didn't, and then I was like, well, I can see the inconvenience of like, oh, it's right there. It's just four, oh. four little shelves down. I and just got to go and, there and grab it. And if you're like me, yeah. they've moved everything around in the grocery store, and I can't <laughs> find anything, and I'm following a list. So I'm walking back and forth all the time. So what I would do in the, is just walk backwards, and they'd be like, no, yeah. I'm walking backwards. I'm This is like, like a yeah. parallel park in here. I'm sorry. I'm following the... <laughs> It's these funny. rules, these rules are driving you nuts, right? So that's, I think that's why, that's just gone because nobody could figure it out. No one could figure it out. Yeah, and, and they weren't going to have people there standing there enforcing it. And... Yeah. All right, well, listen, uh, what is this doing with the baseball? How about baseball is going on? Little League, uh, American Legion, that sort of thing. I, I believe we're all moving forward on that. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And we'll speak with an umpire coming up, Sal Barbero. Uh, Barbero on uh, on that. I also want Sal's opinion on some of the awful calls we've seen this year in Major League Baseball. Like we've seen some really rough umping uh, on a on a, on a national and, and and a professional basis. We'll talk about that.